Hello folks and welcome back to another review and thoughts on. This time to conclude the original well not the original, but remake trilogy of the Grudge. Uh, Grudge three, which came out in two thousand nine. Yeah, two thousand nine. Well the last one came out in uh, two thousand six. Of course there is a it's weird, like it says re it says a reboot, but then it says it's a sequel to the first film. Or it's a prequel and it's a prequel and a second and a sequel to the first film as well as a direct sequel to the other two. Which take that what you will. Um but yeah, this one, the third one, I saw it back on demand once and I was not a fan of it I thought it was stupid, I thought it was dumb, frustrating this time around I still feel it's frustrating but also it lacks you know if anything okay, the first film I don't mind like stuff, some stuff in it, like some of the you know, stuff that they do with Ke uh, Kyoko even the second one, I believe, I don't remember my review of what I gave the second one, I didn't want to look back at it. Um, I think that one's a pretty alright sequel. Because I like how they pick up after the last left off. As does this one, but of course it kills off what, just like the second one, it kills off the survivor of the first film. Let alone the, the so... Uh, recap uh, the Jake character from the second film who was uh, a young kid in the second one uh, his family moved into a building to a building it was cursed because a girl brought the curse into the house into that building uh, long story long story long story short his family dies at the very end of the second film, he gets grabbed by Kayaku, we, we believe that he dies, but nope, he survives for the first five to, or ten minutes, ten minutes of the film, really, probably not even in, not even ten minutes, um, but yeah, he, they bring him back, just to die, so I don't like that, so they pull, a, 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 a Michelle Geller, you know, from the second film, where they kill off her character from, you know, previous. But, and it's directed by, um, Toby Wick, Wil Wilkins. Um, and this one, they want, the script here, I mean, again, it's a, it's a direct sequel from the second film, and also caters to the first film, history of Kayako more of the second film but of course we find out she has a long lost well not lost but a long away sister um that was never mentioned in the first or second film I don't even in the flashback which I swear they don't even show the uh this the sister of Kayako's uh you know young version in the flashback here I think it's a repeat from the second film. Um, oh, though this one was given an R because of its graphic, bloody violence, gore and length. And the gore in this is not really anything to run home about. Like, I'm gonna say that right now. Um, but yeah, it was released straight to video on May 12th. With a theatrical release occurring internationally, it made 38 million in DVD sales against a five million dollar budget. <laughs> Ooh. That stains. Um, but yeah, pretty much after the events of the second film, Jake, uh, under the care of Dr. Sullivan, aka uh, Jigsaw's female apprentice or whatever from uh, Carrie Moss, or not Carrie Moss, I'm sorry, uh, whoever that woman is in the Saw films that 
is like his Harley when uh, pretty much he is locked in a room uh, following several escape attempts and is and is attacked by Kayako. I will admit, like the that scene where he dies, where he gets flung around like in CGI, of course. It's, I can take it or leave it. I mean, it's fine. But again, like he looks like a rag doll just being flung around, like. <laughs> and even like the security guard is like, oh, you, uh, you need to get down here. Something's happening. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Kayako kills him. Um, we do see the aftermath of his bones like being uh, twisted in that, and his arms, his body being detorted. Um, pretty much, then we cut to the sister of Kayako, who is in Japan, or, yeah, in Japan, and pretty much she's aware of what's going on, but she, I guess she's been trying to stay away from the whole curse thing, but now that it's, I guess, reoccurring again, and she's been with it, oh, I don't, she was like, I need to go back to America and stop the curse I guess her husband doesn't want to go with her what the heck okay uh -huh. anyway but yeah pretty much it's uh, the younger sister of Kayako she wants to go back to uh, America to stop the curse and then we cut to this this family of three siblings, uh, older brother Max, who's like the, is pretty, they pretty much live in the same building as Jake did in the second film, and uh, Max is like the older brother of the two younger, young sisters. There's a younger, there's a young sister who's, I guess, legal enough to go off on her own, and then there's the youngest sister who's like really, really young a bit. And she has like chronic sickness, something. They don't specify what it is, but uh, yeah. So the the, the the older sister wants to go to New York, I guess, for modeling with her boyfriend, so she can provide for her sister uh, sickness, pretty much. And the brother Max doesn't really care for her going away like that. So, I did like some of the family karate, karate, uh, uh, dynamic here. I did like some... Like, they're sort of likable in a, to me. I I didn't mind them. But then, of course, like the stupid decisions that... Uh, what is the chick's name? L Lisa makes. The choices that she makes are dumb. When it... But then, like, the whole, even, like, Nayako, yes, Nayako, who's, uh, Kayako's younger sister, Nayako, pretty much, she knows how to stop, she doesn't know how to stop the curse, she knows how to contain it, but not, not really stop it, so, like, I didn't understand her even motivation, like, the fact that she says, like, to stop, she says she's gonna go back to stop it, but then, when she wants to do this ritual thing by the end, it's not really, con it's not stopped, it's somewhat contained but not really because she's doing pretty much what her mom did to Kayako when they were kids where her mom had where her mom would put pretty much the evil spirits into Kayako which made her like that and you know so I didn't get her mo her motivation at the end of the day I that's kind of false she kind of lied there because um, pretty much she wants the young she wants Rose the younger sister of uh, Lisa to, to drink Kayako's blood and that will stop the curse or contain it as she says doesn't stop it um, I mean there's some inter there's some cool shots of Kayako in this very few because nothing much happens in this film it's pretty boring like 
I mean, you get a lame jump scare early on with Dr. Sullivan leaving, like, the hospital, and he, it pans back. No. It's, um... Yeah, I think it's her. I think it's the doc, the Dr. Sullivan, who dies. She dies as well. But that character, she's leaving, like, the hospital hallway or whatever, and then the camera will pan back to a door, and you'll see Kayako in the glass door. Or Nayako is walking out the build, out the uh, residence building, and they'll cut, they'll, or the camera will pan back to the glass where she was looking, and then there's Kayako there when while she's walking away. So it does some of that stuff, which is dumb. There is a cool scene where she kills like this one. It's not really cool, but I liked. Although I I wonder if the uh, the director or writer whoever wrote and directed The Nun. I wonder if they saw this film and took uh, inspiration from this scene. Because, like, Kayako ends up coming out of a... Pa I like how the painting's, like, ble it's bleeding, like it's raining down uh, blood, black blood, but then the blood slowly dissolves into hair, long hair. And then Kayako pretty much rips off S Sadako, uh, Samara, pretty much comes out of his painting, which is pretty cool, pretty, uh, cool camera shot, but that's very far in between of what they do with, I know it's a different actress as well who plays Kayako in this one, which, I thought she did fine, I mean, they're, they're all, it seems like all these actresses, like, do the same, they're, uh, directed to do, like, the same movement, so it was, I mean, I can't really say who did it better, because they're all mimicking the same movements. It's nothing really different. Um, then there's another scene I liked, very brief, with Kayako, where the uh, lights are flashing, and you see her, like, contort her body, like, very, you know, creepily. And she's, like, in the dark, but, like, the lights are going on and off, and you see her moving in the darkness or she's coming out of the dark out of the shadows in one shot which i thought was cool like there's some decent shots and camera angle not even angle but camera shots or should i say frames of kayako in this but there is like very little that because the rest of the movie kind of is just boring it just deals with uh Again, the siblings caring for their sick sister, who we don't know, again, her disease. And, you know, Nayako trying to stop the curse, but really it's to contain the curse. And then Nayako dies because uh, Max gets possessed by the evil presence or uh, curse of the husband who killed uh, Kayako years prior whatever and so he's possessed and even I love how like the one scene where he uh, kicks like Lisa out of the apartment I love how he's walking um, very menacingly like he's tr he's trying to act all men innocent menacing and scary so he's he walks very shoulders back and arms out like this arms out like this and just walks I'm like dude you're trying but you're not succeeding and that's the problem um also the acting in this is okay to fine it's not really horrible it's not bad I did like the boyfriend of Lisa cause um you assume he's going to be like one of those boyfriends that... Because she ends up not wanting to go to New York because of what's going on with the building and her family. You assume that he's one of those boyfriends because he really wants to go to New York. But then you, it's a surprise that he's like, No, I'm going to stay here because you're here. I'm, I'm, I'm going wherever you're going. If you're staying here, then I'm staying here. If you're going to New York, I'm going to New York. If you're staying home, I'm staying home. I liked him, but then, of course, we don't really get much with him to save the day because then he dies I don't know if I even because I tried to like briefly skip through some 
scenes that were just going on and on and nothing was happening really. Just a lot of dialogue, a lot of, do a lot of talking. Um, but yeah, you find out he's dead. Um, but yeah, he seemed like a de he seemed like a decent guy. Who and then I love her her response to him st wanting to stay because she's staying. She's like, "Why would you stay? There's no reason for you to stay." And then he looks at her like, "But <laughs> what?" I, 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 I even I had to like say like, "What?" I even even I laughed out loud because like, why would what I get what is he a he doesn't seem like a bad guy to you like he doesn't seem like the type that would just up and leave you because you know but no he, he and then he, and then he even decided that he wants to stay with her or he asked her to stay while uh because max has gone awol and she's like no you can go um so he leaves then that's but yeah, this whole movie o overall, again, it's shot fine. It's not really, it's not really shot. It's not really shot uh, interestingly. Um, oh yeah, the the, the cam the little scenes with uh, what is his name, Tashio, the little. Ghost boy, or son of Kayako. I ain't care. I don't care about that that type of stuff at all. I don't. I mean, like maybe the first one, you can sort of get away with that because the first time if you saw that one. But like after a while, and he's doing like that that cat sound effect, meow or ah, whatever he does. Like, just take him out. Like, because what does he do? Like, he doesn't really. Like, he's there, what, to get, like, the people scared a bit for his mom to come and get them. But then she gets them. Sometimes he's not even in the scenes. And she just gets them anyway. So it's like, why is he, why does he pop up only at certain times? Um. But yeah. Uh, I would say skip the, don't watch, I would say skip this one. But I mean, if because the the second one kind of, if you want to just leave it off on a downbeat ending, <laughs> which even this one's downbeat because not because nothing is accomplished because because uh, Kayako still uh, takes possession possess, possession of the younger sister at the end of the day of uh, Rose at the very end. So it's like, who? What was all this for? Um. But I would say either watch the first two and just you know cut this off. If you're if you're like a completionist and you want to watch the like complete two of G, I guess go for it. But yeah, other than like maybe three scenes that I liked the camera shots or angles or frames of Kayako, nothing uh, really special here. Nothing, you know. Nothing. Uh, to go off of after that but yeah thanks for watching take care peace and love uh like and subscribe